Everything you think you know about luxury is a lie. In this video, I'll explain what I mean, tell you why, and of course, invite your thoughts on the matter. So stay tuned. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts in your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. So everything you think you know about luxury is a lie, huh? Well, let me explain what I mean. A few weeks ago, I did a video about some coach bags that to me are luxury quality, just as good as bags you might get from places like Louis Vuitton. And I love that that sparked a debate in the comment section and responses from other YouTubers who chimed in with their own videos. And a lot of people started talking about their definitions of luxury, because in that video, I focused exclusively on quality and nothing else. But of course, there is a lot more to luxury than that. And a lot of us came to the same conclusion that luxury is very subjective. And in the most broad sense, luxury is whatever it means to you. And that having one definition of luxury doesn't work because it's going to be different for different people and in respect to different things that we're trying to classify as luxury or not. To me, and I've talked about this before, I have a very broad definition of luxury coming from where I come from, which was being raised in poverty and being in a home that was literally falling apart around us, not always having electricity or water, going years without having a telephone. This was in the time of landlines. To me, there are things that are very simple that I consider luxury, like a cup of tea, basically anything beyond your very basic need for survival, like food, water, shelter. And even those can be a luxury in some circumstances. But that's how I define it, and certainly not everyone feels the same way. Some people have a much more narrow definition of luxury, as I learned from making that video. And I heard some definitions of luxury that I thought were really interesting that I'd never heard before. So I want to go through some of these today, and I also want to question them, because I think that one of the greatest luxuries is knowledge. And that's one of the reasons that I always question things, to gain a deeper understanding and to educate myself more. And I feel like when you do that, when you're curious and you use critical thinking and you think deeply and you gain knowledge. It's like that old saying, knowledge is power. The more informed you are, the more you can make better decisions. Now saying better decisions is a subjective thing in itself, but speaking very generally, that's where we're going with this today. So I pulled six definitions of luxury to share with you. Let's get started. The first is what we just talked about, that luxury is anything beyond the very basic necessities. And when I think of this, I always go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now I know a lot of you are going to be familiar with this already, but just bear with me for those who aren't while I quickly explain this. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is this pyramid with five levels. On the bottom are your most basic needs, and then it goes up to what I think of as the more luxurious needs in life. So at the bottom, I'm referring to my computer here, at the bottom we have physiological needs. These are things like air, water, food, shelter, sleep, that kind of thing. The things we need to remain alive. Next up, you have safety needs. This is personal security, it's employment, being able to pay your bills, have resources like utilities. Next is love and belonging. So this has to do with your relationships, your family, your friends, a sense of belonging and connection. And those three all seem pretty basic to me. I feel like those are things that it's human nature that we have those and want those, generally speaking. But then the top two are where we get into things that are more desirable and not so much needs, in my opinion. So the next one is esteem. This includes things like self-esteem, recognition, freedom, status, this is where we start dipping into the luxury realm, respect. And then at the very top is self-actualization. So this is the desire to become the best that you can be. And self-actualization is where I really think luxury lies in this sense. And I'm not even talking about handbags here, I'm still using a more broad definition of luxury. So this would include things like creativity, art, creative writing. More broadly outside of the self, looking at society, it would include things like 
parks and recreation departments, beautifying cities with landscaping or with murals. They aren't necessary things, but they are things that make life better. Or at least I think most people would agree with that. So that's one definition of luxury, anything beyond those basic needs. The second definition of luxury we'll talk about, and this one I'll agree with. And you know, I started the video by saying everything you know about luxury is a lie. We're getting there, just you wait. So the second definition of luxury is that luxury is worth repairing. One of you brought this up to me, and you said that the founder of Hermes said this. I found a Vogue article from 2021, and by the way, any of the articles I mentioned will be linked in the description box below if you want to check them out for yourself. This Vogue article said that the Hermes artistic director, Pierre Alexis Dumas, said that his grandfather said this, that luxury is that which you can repair. And basically the idea behind this is that it's something that's worth repairing and can be repaired so you can have it throughout your whole life. It can take this journey with you. That's a different take on the Hermes journey. Not that you are buying all as things to get that bag, but that the bag then goes on this journey with you. And it also ties into these more contemporary ideas of sustainability. However, I would argue, this is where we start questioning these definitions, that a lot of people would feel differently, and perhaps especially at the price point where Hermes is, that a lot of people might say, well, if it needs to be repaired, I'm not gonna bother with that. I can afford to just go buy a new one. Like getting things repaired is for poor people who can't afford to buy a new one. Luxury definition number three. This is one that I used in that coach video, and it is that luxury is quality. So picking this one apart, we have to ask, well, what is quality? In that video, I was talking about materials and craftsmanship, but of course, quality is subjective, and it also varies a lot based on what you're talking about. If you're talking about a bag or a car or a house or all kinds of things. And then again, you have to take that through the perspective of different people in different circumstances. And this makes me think of some criticism that I've seen on different people's videos within the luxury community. YouTubers who like me are filming from their home and you get a little glimpse of what their home looks like. And there are certain viewers in the luxury community and possibly some of the YouTubers too who leave nasty comments about someone's home because they have this very limited idea in their head about what life should be like for a person who likes and purchases luxury handbags. They have this idea that if you do that then you also have to have this kind of house that's decorated this way and you have to have this kind of car and fill in the blank other things. Of course, there are so many problems with that way of thinking, but that is coming from one specific perspective. There are people in the world whose homes are shacks that in America, most of us would think, I would never want to live there. That's definitely not luxury. There's nothing luxurious about it. But to some people, having a shack is a luxury because they have a roof over their head and they have some walls that protect them from the elements. Having a shack that has more than one room could be a luxury. And then if they were to come over here and be in some of our low-income housing that a lot of Americans wouldn't want to live in, they might think that's like a palace. So of course, it's very much about your perspective. Luxury definition number four. This is a comment I got on the coach video but it's a comment I've received across several videos talking about handbags and which of them qualify as luxury. And this is one of the things that some people use to define whether something is luxury or not and that is where the item is made. And more specifically, there are people who have said that if it's made in China, it's not luxury. Now I did a whole video on made in China and how that can be a lie. So I'll have that video linked below in case you wanna check it out. But I find that to be a very blanket generalized statement that is completely untrue. I don't understand how a person can say, if it's made in China, it's not luxury. That just doesn't compute in my brain. Because when you stop and think about it for like two seconds, you can realize that no matter where something is made, US, France, China, China, any country can create crap quality stuff and any country can also create really high quality things. France doesn't just make luxury. America certainly doesn't either. And China doesn't just make 
terrible quality things. It really depends on a lot of factors that have nothing to do with the country that it's made in. In the video I did about where handbags are made and some of the lies behind that, I talked about how there are Chinese immigrants that have gone to Italy, for example. Italy is a place that's known for their luxury leather working, but there are factories there full of Chinese people making things. Does that mean that they're not luxury because they're made in Italy, but not by Italians? What if Italian people immigrated to China and started a factory? Does that mean it's crap quality just because it's made in China? I don't think so. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. Luxury definition number five. I thought this one was really interesting and very similar to the made in definition, which is it's luxury if the brand is considered a luxury brand. So coach can never be luxury because it's coach. Louis Vuitton, Chanel are always luxury because they're Louis Vuitton and Chanel. I had a conversation with someone who felt this way in the comments and I disagreed with them and said that I think quality is also a factor, that not everything from Coach is luxury, but some things are in my opinion based on the quality and that with Chanel, a lot of what they make is luxury, but not everything because of the quality. They've had a lot of quality issues. And this person disagreed with me and said that if it's Chanel, it doesn't matter what the quality is. It's luxury just because it's Chanel. I very strongly disagree with that. The brands would certainly have us believe through their marketing that anything they produce is luxury, but I don't think that's true. But I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments section. And the sixth definition that we'll talk about of luxury, and this is probably the one I heard the most other than luxury is subjective, it's whatever it means to you. But with people who had a specific definition of luxury, I heard this a lot, that luxury is exclusivity. Now this I have a big problem with, as you could guess from the premise of my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget. And what that means more broadly is that I'm taking this traditionally exclusive space of luxury where people are excluded from the products based on price point, but also often based on judgment, that you have to be a certain kind of person with XYZ to be worthy of even entering one of those stores, let alone purchasing and carrying their bags, or in the case of Hermes, being offered a bag. So what I've done is take those concepts and I try to break them down on this channel, question them, make us think more deeply about them for the purposes of understanding and gaining knowledge and then making better decisions for yourself. And in doing so, I try to take this exclusive space and make it more inclusive and more accessible to those of you watching. So you can imagine that for me, I have a big problem defining luxury as exclusivity. I did some reading on this and I found some interesting things. First of all, I would have to ask, what is your definition of exclusivity? If you're defining it by price, well, price is relative. So let's take an Hermes handbag, for example, let's say it's $12,000, or let's say it's $50,000. Let's make it even more exclusive. So $50,000 is a lot for a handbag. However, let's take that same price point and put it on something else. $50,000 is pretty average for something like a car, and it's incredibly inexpensive for something like a house, at least in America. And if a house was priced at $50,000, at least in most big cities in America, we would question it. It's probably not in a great shape. So if you're only defining luxury by price point, it doesn't hold up there. Now, of course you could say, well, this is relative. It's, it's expensive for a bag, it's cheap for a house. So you have to take that in mind. Sure, except that if you're talking about access to $50,000 in this case, you can get a loan for the car or the house. Some people could also get a loan to get a $50,000 handbag. Another way to define exclusivity is that something is rare or it's one of a kind. Let's take the example of diamonds. Diamonds are thought to be this exclusive, very luxurious, rare thing. But when you stop and think about it, go to any jewelry store anywhere in the country and they have tons of diamonds and all kinds of people have diamond jewelry. So diamonds are something that have this air of exclusivity and luxury about them, but they're actually something that's quite common and accessible. Or if you're thinking specifically about one-of-a-kind things and that's how you define exclusivity. So maybe I have this Hermes Birkin that's one-of-a-kind, there's not another one in the world like it. Okay, well I have this little ceramic coffee mug that my kid made and painted and there's only one of those too. So you can't really define luxury and 
exclusivity as one of a kind either. And of course the examples I'm giving are more complicated. You could go deeper into them. I'm just giving some really basic examples of how, to me, these definitions don't stand up. One of the articles that I read on exclusivity was from the Chicago Booth Review, and they said that it's human nature that we put greater value on things that other people want but can't have just because they can't have them. And I think that really ties into a lot of what people are talking about with exclusivity, that you want something that is limited edition or something that other people have a very difficult time getting if they can get it at all. For example, there are people who refuse to carry like a Speedy or a Neverfull because they feel like the market is saturated with them, that a lot of people have them and they don't wanna have what everybody else has. They want something more unique. And while I can understand that personally, it's not something I care about. I don't care if every other person in the world has the same handbag I have. If I like that handbag and enjoy carrying it, then I'll get it. Other people have nothing to do with that for me. But this idea of wanting things that other people want but can't get, this article says it's related to a sense of dominance and superiority. And I think that idea is intrinsic to this kind of definition of exclusivity and that people pick up on that and that's where some of the judgment comes from. Like, oh, they're carrying that bag because they want to show off, which I also disagree with. And the article goes on, I find this fascinating, to suggest that there are interesting implications for governments and businesses who take this idea of wanting things that other people want but can't get, and they use this psychology behind it regarding things like distribution of resources or immigration or even nationalism. This idea of superiority through exclusion can manifest in those areas. And businesses use this too in their marketing. I did a video a few years ago, I think it was called Luxury is Not for Poor People. And it's actually about how luxury marketing is directed at the middle class and not, as they would have you believe, to the more wealthy people in society. And that as you gain this knowledge and this understanding, you start to see how luxury is marketed in this false, misleading way that really propagates the superiority through exclusion ideas. A Sotheby's article that I read said, luxury brands are those that offer products or services associated with rarity, excellence, and high prices. They're often seen as status symbols and are popular among high net worth individuals and with aspirational consumers. So not just the wealthy, but the more average middle income among us. And as they talk about exclusivity here with the rarity that the Sotheby's article mentioned, for example, we also have to keep in mind, and I've said this many times before, that the rarity, the exclusivity, the hard to get your hands on nature of a lot of the products that come from these luxury houses we love. It's not real rarity. It is artificial scarcity. This is something that the brands have made up as a marketing and sales strategy to position themselves in the market. And my next video is actually going to be about how Hermes does this. So stay tuned for that one. But in that sense, this artificial scarcity and all the marketing behind the luxury brands positioning themselves as luxury brands. And if you know this and you come to understand it, it can really take a lot of the luster out of this concept of luxury that we have when it comes to companies like this. And when you understand this, it will help you not get caught up in some of those tactics. It can help eliminate that fear of missing out. It can help you be more meaningful with your purchases. That same Forbes article on Neiman Marcus gave an alternate definition of exclusivity that I absolutely love, so I wanna wrap it up with this. This is a positive definition of exclusivity, which I've never seen before. They say the luxury brand becomes exclusive, not in the commonly understood definition of excluding certain people from participating, but in the sense of being that one-of-a-kind brand that is unique, incomparable, and elevated from the rest. And that is a good exclusive that every luxury brand should aspire to be. So in that sense, they are not trying to exclude customers or make their customers feel superior to other people. What they're doing instead is saying that their products and their services are of an elevated quality. That when you come to our brand, you will receive better service, better products than other brands. This doesn't even have to do with price point. It's about treating people well and providing them with products and services that are worth their 
their time and money. And that is what every business should strive for. So what do you have to add to this conversation? How do you define luxury? Is it different from anything we talked about today? Did I potentially say anything that made you think differently about something you thought before? I would love to know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.